In this video, I'm gonna show you the best focal length for portraits. And we're gonna compare 50 millimeters versus 85 millimeters. Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bone Photography. This is your first time watching, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on all of the awesome photography content I'm putting out. Now let's get to it. So there's a big debate on what is the best focal length to use when you're shooting portraits. And depending on who you ask, you're gonna get a variety of different answers. But I think two focal lengths that are very commonly recommended as the best for portraits are 50 millimeters and 85 millimeters. So first, let's talk about 85 millimeters. Now, 85 millimeters is often referred to as a portrait lens. Now, whenever a camera manufacturer releases a new 85 millimeter lens, often the portrait community will start drooling over that lens, being like, oh, this is the best portrait lens out there. This happened with the 85 millimeter Sony G Master lens and the Sigma 85 millimeter lens. And there are a lot of advantages of the 85 millimeter. First off, you get really shallow depth of field when you're shooting at open apertures like 1.8 or 1.4 so you can get really great bokeh which can be really pleasing for portrait images in particular it's really good for headshots you can get a very tight in headshot with the 85 millimeter lens so if you like shooting photos of faces in particular or just focusing on a face it's really great lens for that option now you can take full body images with an 85 millimeter lens, but I think one of the downsides of the 85 millimeter lens is that it's tougher to take full body images. It's tougher to take more environmental portraits because the 85 is really zoomed in and it really compresses the scene down. So it's a, a bit tougher if you're interested in capturing more of the environment. For instance, if you're shooting in a city and you're walking around on the streets, if the streets are really narrow, it could be very difficult to get the angles that you want with an 85 millimeter lens. So the second focal length I'm gonna talk about is the 50 millimeter focal length. Now, one of the reasons that people like the 50 millimeter focal length for portraits is that it's very versatile and flexible. Now, it's really good if you're shooting environmental portraits and you wanna capture more of the scene. It's also really good for headshots and more close-up shots too. If you just step a few cl steps closer to your subject, you can get some really tight headshots and good portraits that way. Now you're not gonna get as much bokeh or quite as much shallow depth of field with the 50 millimeter lens, but you can get some very pleasing bokeh with that. Now again, this all comes down to personal preference. Different photographers like different focal lengths and some would sh rather shoot portraits with something other than a 50 or an 85. I have friends who've shot with a 35 millimeter lens and like that. I'll link up to a video that my buddy Daniel did on my channel where he was shooting portraits with a 35 millimeter F1.4 Sigma lens. And other portrait photographers will say, need to be shooting with a 100 or 135 millimeter lens for portraits because they say it compresses features and smooths it out and makes it a lot more visually pleasing. It's very tough to get more environmental portraits with 100 millimeters or 135 millimeters, but if you're shooting headshots, those are good options as well. So let's go over some sample images that I've taken with 85 millimeter lenses and 50 millimeter lenses. Okay, so let's start off with some photos taken with a 50 millimeter lens. Now what I like about the 50 millimeter lens is it's really versatile. You can do head shots, you can do half body shots or full body shots or more environmental portraits. It's really good for a wide variety of things. So this is a more of a headshot photo I've taken and this is a photo that I took of my friend Rose more of like an upper body shot uh, in the snow. And you can just really see from these photos that you can capture a wide variety of scenes. Now this was taken at the Book Barn in Connecticut, a couple of friends, John and Stephanie. And you can really just capture a lot of different scenes. This is another friend, Stephanie. And here's some examples of some more full body and upper body shots that you can take with a 50 millimeter lens. Now it is possible to get full body shots with an 85 millimeter lens, but it's a little bit more tricky and you have to stand further back and it's more challenging in tighter streets. So a 50 millimeter lens is gonna give you a lot more versatility for portraits. You can also do more close up shots. This is a shot of my friend Lily and you can just get a wide variety of different types of shots with a 50 millimeter lens. And that's something that I really enjoy 
shooting portraits with a 50 millimeter lens. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at some pictures that I shot with an 85 millimeter lens. Now the 85 is fantastic if you like to get close up on faces or do tighter headshots. You can get some really, really fantastic images with an 85 millimeter lens. It's really great for bokeh and really blurring out the background of a photo. And it's really good for those sort of like upper body or profile shots. Now it gets a little bit trickier with trying to do full body shots. You have to stand quite far away. Um, it's good to do something like this. This is a shot of my friend Sarah Kendall. And it's just a little bit easier to get a portrait that doesn't try to include the whole body. Now you can get shots that include the whole body. This is a shot of my friend Dion but I had to stand quite far away to get this photo and the background's really tight. Um, I think this portrait works really well, but if you see the next photo, I really like how much better it is at capturing more of a upper body or profile like that or more of a tighter headshot. So I prefer using an 85 and trying to shoot photos of faces or headshots. And if I'm trying to go for that look, the 85 is a great lens but if I wanna have a little bit more flexibility, then I'll go with the 50. Oh, and by the way, all these photos were shot on film. Oh, shit. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite focal length for portraits. Also, please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I'm putting out a lot of different content about portrait photography and film photography. So if you're interested in either of those, please subscribe. We'll see you soon, folks. This has been another episode of Dan Bowen Photography. Peace.